All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to export from Lightroom. And we're going to do it two ways. We're going to export to a folder on the computer. And in this case, in a Dropbox folder and subfolder. Then I'm going to show you how to share a Dropbox link and why you would do that. And then the second thing we're going to do is export out to Mac Mail uh, so that you can just have a nice little attachment there and send it to whoever you need to. All right, so the first thing we want to do is obviously be in Lightroom. And I'm going to show you how to do one picture first, and then I'll show you how to do multiple pictures at the same time. So let's pick a photo. And in this case, I'm going to pick this one right here that you've uh, done a little bit of cropping and uh, uh, color and exposure tweaking and all that on. And so I'm going to double click it and bring it up full size. All right. And you can do it from right here in the library module, full size. Uh, you can also do it from the develop module, but I'm just going to do it from right here. And I'm going to go to the export button in the lower left corner. And we want to export to a specific folder is what I recommend. And I want you to always pay attention to the folder pathway here. Right now it's set to users, Rod Yeager, Dropbox, FMM, RMY, um, Montco book, uh, I guess Montgomery County book or whatever. And if you needed to put it in a, a different folder, for example, you could hit choose and simply find whatever folder that you needed. So you could go to a different Dropbox folder. Uh, you could go to a desktop folder or whatever you needed to do. But in this case, we want to be in Dropbox. And in your case, the FMM RMY uh, Montgomery County book folder. So I'm going to double click it. And once I confirm that I'm in that folder, I simply hit choose. That confirms the folder that I'm in. So again, I'm just showing you uh, if you wanted to choose another folder, how to do it. In this case, I'm putting you, I'm exporting right back to that same folder that was already there. And so again, just confirm right here. Now, one thing that you do not want to do in your case is put it in a subfolder. You want it right out in this folder. So I'm going to remove that checkbox. Now the only thing we need to do is uh, figure out if we want to rename the file. Some people do. Uh, in your case, I think you're just going to leave that alone. Scroll on down, and we need to decide whether we're going to export it out as a JPEG or a TIFF. Now, JPEG is going to be uh, suitable for web use, uh, suitable really and truly if you wanted to um, uh, for some printing, okay? and some other things, but if your printer or publisher has specified that he or she wants a certain format, for instance, TIFF, then that's what you need to export it as, okay? And so let's say that the publisher says, well, I need you to send me the TIFF version. That's going to be a much larger file size, all right, but that's okay. So you would click right here and you would choose TIFF, okay? And you're going to leave everything else alone, and we're going to export it out. And notice our progress bar, and it exported it to that Dropbox folder. All right? And you're done. Once that progress bar goes away, you're done. Now, just as another example, I'm going to export out the same, same photo. We're going to send it to the same location. And I'm going to export it out, this time as a JPEG, just to show you. So we're going to have two separate photos. One will be a JPEG, one will be a TIFF. When I do JPEG, the only thing I want to concern myself with is this quality slider. Quality at 100 means virtually no compression on it. So as high a quality JPEG as you can get. All right. If you're going to do it, and that's suitable for a lot of printish, uh, printing or publishing use, or like if you're going to put it in your InDesign document, I would suggest a 100 quality, which is the same as no compression, JPEG. If you're going to do it for your website, there's no hard number for this, but I generally put it in the 60 to 70 quality range. Maybe a little less, it really depends on the picture and the photo. 
like I said, there's no hard number for this. It's more of an art form. Uh, but somewhere in the 60 to 70 range is usually more than sufficient for website use. Okay. But in this case, for our example, I'm going to just leave it at 100. And then the only other real consideration is if you want to resize the picture. So, for instance, on your website, a 650 by 650 pixel photo is plenty large. Some people do 450 by 450, some 1,000 by 1,000 like we have here. But you definitely don't want, say, a 2,500 by 2,500. That's just entirely too large. That would fill up an entire screen. And then you're giving away on the website your almost full-size photo. So again, if you're going to do a website picture, you may definitely want to consider resizing it. All right. In this case, I'm going to remove the checkbox, though. And so we're just going to export out a full resolution uh, non-compressed JPEG. And again, just to show you, we're going to export it out to the user's Rod Yeager Dropbox, the FMMY, RMY folder. So I hit export. We watch our progress bar up here. And once it's completed, then that picture is there. Now to show you that, there are several ways to do this. One of them is you can click on the Dropbox icon up here in your top menu. Click on the folder icon right here, and that'll open up the root Dropbox folder. And then I can go into this FMM RMY folder, and looky there, there's the JPEG that we just did, and there's the TIFF. And just to kind of show you, I'm going to put it in cover flow view, there you go. See, virtually the same picture, one's less than one megabyte, the other one is 5.6 megabytes. All right. This uh, TIFF is a much heavier file. The JPEG is a much lighter weight file, so it kind of depends on what you need it to do. Now let me show you how you would share that photo with Dropbox. And the reason that you would do it is, I'm going to use this TIFF. Let's say that you need to send this TIFF to your publisher. Well, the problem is, it's a 5.6 meg file. So if you had to send two or three of these, that's going to load up your email. And the recipient's email, or yours, may actually reject that heavy of an email. But you can send them a link to Dropbox. They click the link, and then they can download the picture on their own. And Dropbox pretty much doesn't care how large the file is or how many links you put in an email. Because in the email, you're emailing the link to Dropbox, not the actual file. All right. And so what you would do is right click and choose Share Dropbox Link. And when you click this, you're going to get a little message that flashes up right here. And it's just saying, hey, it copied the link to your clipboard. Now, you don't have to view that. It's, that message is just showing you that it's there. And what you would do then is you want to pull up your Mac Mail program. Or you could have it already running. And once you pull up your Mac Mail program, uh, or, again, you could have it running in an alternate screen. All right. You start a new email. And let's say you're going to send this to me. And then you would just go down here in the body of the email. And, of course, I'm a right-click fanatic. You would right-click it and say paste. And what that does, see, it pastes a link to Dropbox to that particular exported file. And it does a kind of a, a hashed file name here. That's why it looks funny. Okay? Now, let's say you had to do another picture. Well, what you would do is just kind of leave this email window, you know, sitting there. All right. You go back over here to Lightroom. And let's go find us another picture. So I'm actually going to click on my grid view. And I'm going to choose this picture. And this time, I'm going to show you how to do a couple of them. I'm going to command click from my grid view four different pictures here. And I'm going to choose Export. Notice they're highlighted in a lighter color. That means that they're selected. I did a Command click on each of those. I'm going to hit Export. Again, we're going to 
just double check ourselves it's going to the folder that I want I'm gonna scroll down I'm gonna do them as 100 percent or 100 quality JPEGs in this case and I'm gonna hit export I'm gonna watch my progress bar and presto now once I've done that um, we want to do a couple of things we want to go up and check our Dropbox folder again so I'm going to click on Dropbox I'm going to click on my main Dropbox folder icon and I'm going to go into the FMM folder and looky here there are those uh, photos the four photos that I just exported all at one time so I'm going to right click this one I'm going to say share Dropbox link I get my notice saying it copied that link to the clipboard okay. I need to switch back over to my email that I started which is right here and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna paste that link in and notice again it's kind of a hashed folder name that's for security purposes and it's a hashed name to that particular file all right I'm gonna hit enter a couple of times just to give me some line spaces and you're just gonna go back to the folder again I just clicked back on the uh, finder window you could also go back to Dropbox go back to your folder and go in that way all right so you can do it either way uh, let's do this gamble weed I'm gonna right click it share Dropbox link come back over to my email right click and paste or you could actually do command V for paste and you just keep doing that now again you could put 500 photos in this email doing it this way it will take a few minutes but you could do it and it wouldn't matter how large the photos are okay? because what happens is once you send this email to me I'll show you what I see okay so let's pretend now that I'm on my computer alright so pretend like this is my computer and I check the email and I get that link and when I click on that link then I get to see the photo and I can go up here and say open it or I can click here and preview it or uh, download it or whatever I need to do no matter how large that photo is and so that's the advantage of using a Dropbox link now I also of course showed you then I'm gonna close out of all these emails so again if I were ready I would send that but I'm gonna close out of here just to get them out of the way and that's the advantage of doing a Dropbox link and again in this case I did a command click to send multiple copies now let me show you how to go directly from Lightroom to an email but you want to be careful you don't want to do this for your publisher or printing company because Lightroom is automatically going to create an email optimized photo which is not going to look good in a printed publication so in a printed publication you want to either export that 100 quality JPEG or just use a TIFF depending on what your printing or publishing company requires so I'm gonna go over here we're gonna choose these again we're gonna export them out we're gonna choose it to email but what we want to do here is right here in this Lightroom presets we want to choose for email and what that's going to do is notice it automatically dropped our quality to 60 and looky here it's automatically going to resize these smaller and what that means is they'll it'll resize and and change the size and the file weight of them or file size I call it the weight so that they'll go through most email systems and we're going to hit export and then let's see about sending that to me and we'll call it test photos again and we're gonna hit send and we give it just a, a minute or so and notice now it launches our program and notice our total message size is only 368 kilobytes that's 0.368 megabytes that'll definitely go through so we went from 32 megabytes literally 32,000 uh, kilobytes 
down to 368 kilobytes or 0.3 megabytes. That'll definitely go through because most email systems uh, cap at either 10 or 20 megabytes. So this this will be fine. But these are not suitable for printing. Okay, these are suitable just for email sharing, maybe sticking on Facebook or something like that. And we'll hit send. And then I'll receive those here in a few minutes. So. Now you've seen how, an e how your email program will come back and you want to pay attention to that file size. If it's over, my rule of thumb is 10 megabytes, 20 maximum, but 10 for most email systems. Then you want to go back in and make sure that you export it out using that Lightroom email preset. And that's how you do it.